Out on the stump, where policy meets the real world. Would you guys like to come in? Because it's freezing cold and wet here. Today, cold and wet. Yet long term, what to do about global heating? Labour realising the London Mayor's flagship clean air policy, ULES, cost it votes. In an election, policy matters. And we are doing something very wrong if policies put forward by the Labour Party end up on each and every Tory leaflet. We've got to face up to that and to learn the lessons. The Tories have been dining out on their unexpected win in Uxbridge, with all eyes now on the seat soon to be vacated by Nadine Dorries, mid-Bedfordshire. A solid Tory shire for nearly a hundred years. If climate policies are one of the key talking points of these by-elections, then the, the next electoral test is instructive. Of course, tackling climate breakdown is important, but given the short-termism of the ballot box, how to make it a vote winner rather than vote loser? ULES is nev never going to be an issue here, but what is an issue for the Tories is, is their green agenda. And a lot of right-wingers think they should tone it down. So, in other words, short-termism. What do you think? Well, I, I support the green issue, and we've got to do something to get um, global warming under control, haven't we? So, I, I support... So, so, even if it hits people in the pocketbook, perhaps the parties need to work together to... to well, I think know. Labour will be even worse than the Tories. The scientists, on the one hand, tell us we can't wait, and the politicians, when they put it to the electorate, decide we're going to have to wait. Well, they're putting economics above what we actually need for the planet. So everything is consumerism. And uh, I, there needs to be a different way. The Lib Dems sense an opportunity. You've got to make big, bold decisions about the long term, yet people worry about their pocketbook and tomorrow. Look, I mean, when I'm out, out and about on the doorsteps in mid Bedfordshire, people are telling me they are incredibly fed up with the way the Conservatives have let us down. And that's on things like the environment, of course. We are not doing enough to tackle climate change, and people are worried about the future. But also, it's things like the NHS, where they're really concerned they can't get the GP appointments they need them. We can win anywhere. Our historic by election victory. No one expected us to win here. The big parties all claim victories of sorts, but there are climate policy lessons across the board. Well, earlier I spoke to Craig McKinley, the Tory MP for South Thanet and chair of the Net Zero Scrutiny Group. I began by asking him if the party's victory in Uxbridge and South Ryslip was purely down to opposition. To you. Uh, a mayor that is uh, obviously not warmly received in, in those parts of outer London who wants to raise £4,000 a year for uh, very many people who uh, either can't afford or don't want to buy a new vehicle compliant with his new rules. So we didn't have that USP elsewhere in, in, in uh, Selby and down in um, Sumpton Frome. And yeah, that uh, poor showing that we've got around the country, I'm not going to gloss over that, uh, worked against us there. But uh, in Uxbridge, out of the three, on paper, you'd have said it was the toughest one to win, but we won it. Right, or to put it another way, you won it because you threw your green principles under the bus. Well, I'm not, not entirely sure. I mean, you know I'm the chairman of the Net Zero Scrutiny Group. It was obvious to the people of Uxbridge uh, they were looking at these costs very much in the face in two months' time and are saying, well, no, thank you very much. I would have thought we should learn from that and perhaps take our foot off the pedal a bit on some of these more outlandish uh, net zero proposals about heat pumps, banning things, banning the uh, internal combustion car by 2030, uh, uniquely in the world because no one else is doing it under that short time frame, and perhaps learn from that and say, do you know what? We've found some clear blue water between us and Labour on some of these policies. I'd recommend we take them. So you're saying go slow on some of these issues. The climate experts are saying we can't go slow. We haven't got the time. Well, well, I, I, I get that. I mean, we can have a broad discussion about this e expert, that expert. We've been you know, following the science for uh, some time with, uh, uh, you know, the Bank of England spreadsheet is not doing very well and the COVID spreadsheet was even worse. So uh, we've got a, it's a two billion, two trillion pound spreadsheet if we comply with what some of the uh, climate uh, specialists are saying about net zero. But let's put that aside. 
for now. Um, as you know, the UK's output of CO2 is a mere rounding error of about 1% of global output. We're seeing China going uh, hell for leather for new coal-powered stations, digging up new coal. Indonesia and in India and all the others uh, developing countries are on a similar pathway. And I, you know, I just think, what will our population say when they're saddled with these huge costs? Uh, they're living a, cold, uh, a world that's colder and poorer, and they look rather wistfully at the rest of the world mm. still growing on the back of hydrocarbon energy. Now, I'm not saying that's good, bad or indifferent, but that's the reality well, of it. Exactly what you're saying is that for, for the sake of people's you know, pocketbooks, the money in their pocket, for the sake of your political self-preservation, you know, abandoning all these green principles, which, which, you know, the last few prime ministers have been banging on about, is something that you're prepared to do. Uh, no, because I've got a completely different energy policy. It's not one based on batteries, which uh, are reliant on cobalt dug out by children in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's not reliant on batteries where uh, China is increasingly in the fundamental supply chain. It surely has to be one on gas, and we are importing vast amounts of gas, uh, no jobs, loads of uh, balanced payments losses from places as far afield as Australia. The better plan is for uh, domestic gas as we move towards a very, very substantial nuclear future. Um, just finally, Craig, I mean, the result in North Yorkshire was, I mean, catastrophic for the Tory party. Do you think that all the other issues you've got to deal with, whether it's cost of living, whether it's, you know, Brexit not doing what it promised to do, whether it's, you know, the carousel of prime ministers, all that stuff is just so weighty. There's so much of it that whatever you say about ULEZ or climate change, you're just not going to win the next election. Well, I mean, Uxbridge proves something, doesn't it? It proves that we had a policy that was contra to Labour's, you know, the most powerful Labour politician in the land, the Mayor of London, um, he, he was promoting something. The people in outer London did not want it. I mean, I'm not going to gloss over the poor results in, uh, you know, in, in North Yorkshire or, or in Somerset. Of course I'm not. But, I mean, the circumstance under which those elections were called never go down very well with Conservative voters. I mean, you know, and, and it's a low turnout. I mean, there's lots of features of it. But, no, appalling results. Of course they were. And do you know what's happening here? No matter where you look in the world, if you've got a right-leaning government, I one we have here, uh, and they're in the saddle of high inflation, high interest rates, people look to the other side. People are just swapping to the other side because we're in the saddle, sadly, uh, for a very rough time in the economic uh, outlook for the country. Craig McKinley, thank you very much indeed. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.